Today I decided it should be a good time to go over a recovery from step one. Uh, not the recovery, just the refrigerant identification. One of the most overlooked and neglected parts of both automotive air conditioning and commercial or residential HVAC. You would not believe how many times there's contaminated refrigerant. I've made a couple of videos about that showing contaminated refrigerant. Especially on R22 where somebody drops a blend right on top of 22. But in this case, this is a Prius and as you can see right here. And uh, just going to test the refrigerant make sure it's good to go. So the unit was turned on. Let's hit next. So next. Now the tool warms up. While the tool warms up, you gather your uh, proper unit. This one says for R134. This one here is for the YF, the 1234YF refrigerant. So I'm getting this ready. I'll um, put it on the fitting. Make sure your fitting is clean. You don't want to damage your seals. They have these little ends right here that are plastic that screw on. And okay, it did its warm up. Start, select. I want 134. Select. It shows a little picture. I mean, this is like brain dead, simple, easy. It's picture telling. So uh, connect it up. Give it a little twist. It's on. Connected. Start. Calibrating. We're already uh, one minute and uh, 43 seconds into this video. I already have the weight for the scale on here. So I'll clear that. That's cleared. Uh, today I'm using the little field piece. I'm using the little tiny guy because you always see me use the big guy. I have a little extra time. It does, it's not that much big difference on time. This is a super, super small capacity system. I think it's only 480 grams or so. Okay, ready to test. Connect to source and twist center valve, uh, coupling valve to start flow. So you come down here and you twist, you screw it down, and that will engage and depress the Schrader valve. Hit test, test. We're now two minutes and 30 seconds into the test since the start of this video. So then coming back here, I have my hoses connected up. I already turned and purged through this system. This was vacuumed out down to 800 microns. I put, um, and I actually attached it and put a little bit of pressure of 134 into the system from the system to make sure when I open or close or manipulate any valves, I've already put it through all its functions that there will be no uh, sucking in of air or anything like that. Okay, so I'm ready to uh, recover. And this one, okay. So, well, that's still going through testing. I'm making sure my liquid size is closed because I don't want to pull out liquid gas yet because I don't want to remove oil from the system. I just want to remove vapor. This is going to go on the vapor side. I'm just double checking and making sure everything is good. And it's finished. Let's see results. Results here 100% R134 with 0% air. Okay, so now I could decouple. And we're uh, 3 minutes and 47 seconds into the video. Of course, that didn't take the time of me getting out the unit and everything like that and opening it up and getting it ready. But you can see that part. Um, so now I could rehook up the low side to the gauge. This one doesn't give you a lot of room in there. So now I'm depressing the coupling. Feel it hit. There we go. You can tell it's cold outside because there's 55 PSI in the system. So it's not very hot. It's a cool day. We're open. We're open. We're closed. Vapor only. Going down into the unit. Let me open the valve all the way. We're open, as you can really obvious to tell, just by the blue line, this is R134, R134, R134. And uh, I put a couple new valves on there a couple months ago. These handles have been replaced. Usually these say R134 on them too. And yes, I'm in a live shop, so there is noise. Okay, we're at 
five minutes, turn on the recovery unit. It's recovering. And, oh, zero it out. And we are going in now. So at the five minute point, I turned on the unit. I zeroed it out. You can see the pressure dropping. You can see the weight going up on the tank. And this is the little field piece recovery unit. This is a very, very nice little unit. Let's see what it looks like. down there so I'm gonna turn this down yeah it's still recovering okay now I know when I drop this low on the vapor side and I'm this low on the liquid side and I'm not open on the liquid side I know there's no more liquid on the liquid side so there's no chance of me pulling out liquid and removing oil at the same time so now it's safe for me to open up the liquid side and you can look inside your uh, sight glass here if you had liquid in there and I opened this up you would see liquid coming over you would see oil coming over that's no good you don't want to do that but now that I know I'm this low I could open that side up and I have no fear of pulling oil out of the system and as you see we're now six minutes and 52 seconds into the entire video 225 grams out so far and we're going negative now and don't pay attention to this YF that's something I set up for different refrigerants for when I'm actually charging and if you're curious for you automotive guys you really don't okay different refrigerants and it went down through look at the different refrigerants I think there's like 25 refrigerants inside here Oh, there's a 134 that's supposed to be replacing the R410. I tried to get some R R32 just recently, and uh, they don't even have it lifted at, listed at Johnstone or ARS or anyone like that. Because I had a customer who somebody illegally imported in a whole bunch of uh, Daikin or Gree units um, that have R32 in them into the USA to sell them under the table black market at a really cheap price. You can get big Daikin units uh, or Gree or stuff like that for like $250 a ton. So when you buy them by the whole uh, container load, you know you buy big VFRs and stuff like that, they're only like $250, $300 a ton. That's all you pay. So you buy a 20 ton system times $250 a ton, $300 a ton, that's your price. Really simple. The units are actually really cheap. The markup is really high when they come into the sites. They go through the importer, especially if you are like, oh, say, uh, uh, Samsung of USA or Daikin of USA. And the units stop. Okay, we're stopped down here at 13. I'm going to hit it again. Want to go a little lower. We're 8 minutes 42 seconds into the video. So when you import a million dollars of units, and if you buy them, not going through the American distributor, you, you're basically kind of breaking some agreements with distributors and uh, marketing and laws because you're getting units that weren't meant for the US market and you bring them in by the whole, uh, not pallet load, but whole container loads at a time. You just forego any of the warranty and parts and any of the backup uh, of technical support or anything like that to get the units at a really good price. And actually, I know somebody who just uh, they offered, it came to me that they uh, got a bunch of units into this country at a very, very good price for Gree. And um, yeah, that's how you do it. You go, you approach somebody over there and, uh, and we're into Micron level now. We are very empty. And uh, 230 grams. And we're nine minutes and 50 seconds into this video. So what I'm gonna do now 
is I am going to close off so I could do a bleed down test to let it stabilize out to see if there's any more refrigerant in there. And it did jump, so something just perched. But I'm also gonna shoot the refrigerant in there so I can measure it. So what I'm gonna do is do a clean out of the coil, self purge. So going over to self purge, now it's taking the liquid out of the coil, pumping the liquid into the tank. And you just seen that it jumped up to 300 and plus grams. And the hood, I see the hood. So here is the hood. Let's see how many grams is in this unit. This unit is roughly 420 grams. So this hood, this should have 420 grams and this is a 2017. So 2017, let's see how low it is from 2017 if it's never been recharged. It has 320 grams. So it's 100 grams low from 2017. And if your eyes have already caught it through watching my video, you've noticed this fitting right there. It has a bit of oil residue with uh, dust buildup on it right there. So this guy is a little bit oily. This fitting is really bone dry. There's absolutely nothing. This is like the day it came off the showroom floor. Let's see if we can see any little shadows anywhere. It's pretty dry and shadow free. This is actually water. This is water up there. There's water right there. And that dark shadowing is not an oil leak, it's water. Coming down here at the seal down here, this is where the dryer sock goes in. There's no evidence of uh, leakage down there. I do, with my eyes, oh yeah, I guess the camera could pick it up too. I do pick up a little shadowing right here and a little shadowing right here. Can't say that's leak or not, but there is a little bit of shadowing there. While you're in this state, since you're already here, this is when you do a full once over visually and you try to follow the lines all the way back. You look for, you look way back there and you look for uh, oil leak. There's the expansion valve. So start looking out over everything, all the fittings, look at all the joints, and start looking for any shadows of oil that might be leaking. There's the electric compressor. There's the discharge valve, high pressure. And there's a suction line right there, fitting. So, Okay, so we fell to uh, 9 PSI, so that means we still have refrigerant inside the system. We're at negative 9. We need to get it back up here to negative 15. So I'm going to turn it back on again, go back into recovery, get it back in here to recovery, and pull down some more. Because I do not have all the refrigerant out of there yet. And this is one thing, the field piece, It will shut itself off. Oh, and it would help if I do this. Hello. Let me fly. Is anybody home? And I'll get this all the way back down again into the microns. And I'll turn it back off and let it sit some more. And as you see, we're definitely pulling down. Or 900 microns. Cannot start the vehicle, so I cannot pre-warm it up. It is in here, towed in, dead. And so this is one of those scenarios where you cannot pre-warm the vehicle, the cabin, and help you run fans and stuff like that to aid you on recovery. Thank God it's not a real cold morning. Okay, so I'm gonna turn this off. turn this off now, and then wait again to see if this comes back up. And then I'm gonna put this back into self purge again to get the liquid out of the coil and pump it in to clean out the unit of all the refrigerant. And 
let's see where we're at now. 325, so we went up five grams. And then I'll wait again, another five minutes, and see if this stays above 15. Usually by the second or third time I pull it down into the micron level, it just stays in the micron level. Then I'll go to my vehicle, I'll get my nitrogen, and I'll pump nitrogen into it and make it plus one, two, three PSI with dry nitrogen in the system. So when the technician unbolts, it doesn't suck in moist air and contaminate the ESCO oil that's in the system for that electric compressor that's down there. All right guys, I'm gonna sign off. This is it, I'll see you on the next one. If you want to look up this part number for automotive, this one um, is for the automotive refrigerants and it does R22. There's another one they have. You see my one that's wide, it's a different part number. Instead of being up this way, it's long ways by the same company. And it does R410 and some of the blend refrigerants for HVAC. Uh, the HVAC guys should have the ones for the HVAC. The automotive guys get the ones for automotive. But the HVAC guys are lazy, cheap, or ignorant, and they deny that they have to have one, and they just guess when they have contaminated refrigerants. So either they don't fix the problem, or they start throwing parts on it and live in denial and bury their head in the sand and, and say there's no such problem. And uh, I won't go there because there's so much contaminated R22 on the market and dropped in blends on top of it. It's ridiculous, especially here in the big city. All right, see you guys.